Oh, hey, it's me, John Wayne. Well, I sure am happy to be here to celebrate Mother Horror's birthday by reading from my new book, Mage of the Hellmouth, from Grindhouse Press. Ooh la la. Uh, Mage of the Hellmouth is about this stoner guy named Jake who works downtown in this ice cream facility, but he gets transferred to their main plant, and everything there reminds him of this game he used to play called Mage of the Hellmouth. So he goes home, and he digs out all the campaigns, and he reads through them, and he realizes that his life, his job, and this game are converging as one. So I'm going to do a reading right uh, after our hero has found himself transferred to the new facility, and he's remembering the experience of being transferred by his boss. So we'll just go ahead and start the... Right here. I think that's just about enough of that, don't you? Hello. I will be your guide on this journey through the reading of Mage of the Hellmouth. <clears throat> Jake lay in bed, staring up into the languidly dissipating cloud of marijuana smoke as he gently pushed it from his lungs and out past his lips. The Rocky Erickson record he'd been listening to ended several minutes ago. The needle bumped up against the label as it continued to spin soundlessly. He was stoned and lost in thought and had yet to get up and flip the record. The entire day felt surreal and the news he received from Ron was jarring. Jake had felt something was off since the morning when Max missed their pre-work smoking ritual because he'd supposedly been ill. Supposedly. He saw Max before he left, and he looked sicker than Jake had ever seen anyone look outside of a zombie movie. Any other day, Jake would have never second-guessed the validity of Max's ailment, but this particular day left him questioning everything. He knew he was stoned at the moment, but Jake had begun to deeply consider the possibility he'd accidentally stumbled into another iteration of his usual reality where everything was sort of the same, but different. He accepted the transfer to the main fam mark facility, despite every fiber of his being teeming together to rally against the decision. When Rob told him about the rays, it was a no-brainer. Jake had literally been trying to decide what menial service job to apply for, which was where he would much rather work than the other facility, but a $5 an hour raise was too much to turn down. Rob had almost forgotten to mention the raise, treating it as an afterthought, having assumed Jake was already aware of it. Taking the transfer wasn't ideal for him, but it meant he'd be making significantly more money. More money than he ever had in his life. <gasps> Images flashed through Jake's head of the benefits of having more income, including a new, or at the very least, a newer car. He would be able to buy more weed at a time and even splurge on some of the craft beers he'd been wanting to try, but was dissuaded by the price. He could finally upgrade his stereo and get rid of this piece of shit receiver and semi-blown speakers. Jake rested his pipe on the nightstand and rolled out of bed, thinking about the new stereo components, reminded him to get up and flip the record. He dropped the needle just beyond the first groove, and the song Two-Headed Dog sprang from the speakers in the middle of the opening riff. 
Jake returned to his bed, snatching the pipe up as he rolled back atop the rumpled tangle of sheets. He took another long, slow drag and let the smoke tingle his lungs before releasing it through his nostrils. After telling Rob he would accept the offer to transfer, Jake immediately thought of his friend and wanted to know if Max was among the transferred. It's against company policy to divulge personal information about employees to anyone, including other employees. Rob had rattled off the answer like it had been queued up in his head for some time. Come on, Jake said. Just tell me. You know Max is pretty much my best friend, right? He's going to tell me anyway. I could probably run and catch him, and he'd just tell me now, so why don't you just let me know? If you want to know so bad, then you can run to try to catch him, Rob said, trying to fight the edges of his mouth from turning up slightly. He'd got enjoyment, enjoyment, out of enforcing the small amount of power he still held over Jake. Jake then stood and removed his lab coat and let it fall to the chair behind him. Sometimes it was hard for him to believe it had actually been ten years. Since he'd graduated from high school, believe it or not, the time had blazed by. The only thing he still owned from that time in his life was the half-broken telephone he was staring at, willing to ring. Thank you. Good night.